two-part documentary delves into the world of Irish dance and experiences the extreme discipline and dedication it takes to be part of this growing global sport. Get it off the back. As we journey with dancers from Ireland, England and America, we look beyond the fake tan and wigs. I think it looks ridiculous. We also witness the highs and lows of each competitor as they battle it out to be the best. The world title is everything in Irish dancing. I have so much pressure to retain the title. I don't want to lose it. Although it was originally founded by the Gaelic League in 1883, the touring shows are to be thanked for bringing Irish dancing to the world stage. They gave it a new lease of life and created a worldwide phenomenon. Irish dancing wasn't the coolest thing to do, and it was often the butt of jokes. Some people thought it was great because it was Irish, and then some people just thought it was ridiculous. Why would you want to do that? I think Riverdance changed that by bringing it to a world stage and by Irish people seeing that the outside world thought this was something cool. I think it possibly gave Irish people the confidence to say, yeah, it is actually cool and it is something we should be proud of. Riverdance did manage to make Irish dancing something that those who would not never buy into folk culture then find themselves actually appreciating. It took the whole world by storm. And I knew in my heart and soul then, this is it, this is where we're going, this is the way. I was part of that original performance of Riverdance and none of us were prepared for the reaction, both in Ireland and around the world. We travelled around the world during the day. At night time they get four and five standing ovations. Um, they get to live their life through that dance that they worked so hard for. I like that. To me, that means something. City West welcomes the 2011 Irish Dancing World Championships back to Dublin for the first time in 15 years. Throughout the world, City West will see over 40,000 spectators pass through the doors of their state-of-the-art convention centre. One of the most outward changes that's visible to us is the whole notion of the World Championships, which moved from like Colosh to where it could be housed in a school in Dublin, to now not only being housed in Ireland, but also being housed overseas, attracting thousands of competitors. It's become an entire, you know, 10-day festival. And, and people are still buying into it, and they're preparing it for the whole year. When I won the Worlds was back in 75, and um, it was at the Mansion House, and it was a very prestigious event, it was a beautiful event. It was a completely different sort of a competition those days. It was much smaller, it's much bigger now, and much more glamorous. In the run-up to the opening ceremony, the year-long planning process is aided by intense labour and attention to detail. With workers from all over the country pitching in, everyone plays a part in making the main event happen. Practicing for this year's Worlds is 12-year-old Jack Quinn. The Dublin-based dancer has seen a string of successes since he began Irish dancing at the age of six. He came home one day and said he just wanted to start Irish dancing. And I kind of thought, oh, fine, yeah, it'll be a bit of a, you know, do it for a while. Um, didn't know what he was getting involved in or what he, you know, that he'd be so interested and so good. Being from a football background, I thought it well, not strange, but just uh, it's going to be different and didn't know how to handle it in the, in, in the start because, you know, it's that time it wasn't, I wouldn't have seen it as a man's thing or a boy's thing to do. Hand in, hand in! My opinion has changed on it now because I see how passionate he is about, about the sport. What really sunk at home to me was his confirmation day here. We had a party in the house of, and with friends around come 7 o'clock in the evening, he was gone off to do his dancing and he was away for two hours. The party was in full swing, but his party, but he wanted to practice for his dancing and that was it, you know, so he's, he's very happy with it. To begin with, Jack danced once weekly during school time. Since then, he has joined the O'Shea School of Irish Dancing and trains seven days a week. Jack is a very driven kid. He's um, enthusiastic. He absolutely loves his dancing. He's prepared to put a huge amount of effort into it. And he's prepared to take all kinds of correction. You never have to push him into anything. He just has the enthusiasm to do it. He has a great love for dancing. And I think that's, that's the most important thing as far as we're concerned. I wanted to become an Irish dancer because my, uh, I saw my cousin dancing at a festival. When I saw her dancing that night, I just kind of really wanted to do it myself. I thought it was really cool. The first fish 
I brought him to, it was lots of screaming and shouting and a kind of chaos and I sat there being very cynical as I didn't know anything about it and turned around to people beside me and said, this is a bit over the top. But then Jack got up and danced and I ended up winning and I was as bad as everybody else. I was surprised I did well, especially because it was my first fish because I think I didn't realise what was going on. I'm so young. To be a competitive dancer in this day and age, you have to have 100% complete commitment. A top champion dancer will probably practice anywhere from an hour to two hours a day, especially on the days where they don't have a class. The standard of, the, of today's dancer is supreme. Sometimes I, I get up early to practice. He practices every day practically, like, you know, for an hour, two hours every day, maybe more. I don't think he can practice too much. Coming up to major championships, if they want to do extra classes, we do extra classes with them and that could maybe be four nights a week or maybe th three nights in one afternoon. It depends on the dancer and depends how much commitment they have. Any of the dancers who want to do really well, they, they have to be very committed and they have to work really, really hard. It's all about commitment, really. You know, if you're going to do anything, you need to do it fully and you need to uh, engage yourself completely in it and that's never more true as in the case of Irish dancing. I get very excited the day of competitions. I just kind of, I, I'm, I just really want to get there to the to the competition and just be there and then I kind of settle a bit. As a practice before the World Championships, Jack goes to a local fesh in Tyrrellstown County, Dublin. Uh, today it was great. Um, my teachers thought I danced really well and I felt really good about it. So, really happy. Winner of the Boys Championship 2013 is number 150 Jack Quinn from Spider B Hall. My first worlds were in Philadelphia in 2009 and I was 10 years of age. I'd known from the All Ireland that it would be big but I still wasn't sure what it would be like. I walked out on the stage and it was absolutely huge and I just kind of, I, I was a bit shocked at how, how big it was. Coming second it was a really, really good experience. Irish step dancing is not an easy dance style to master. It is now probably the most intricate footwork of all dancing in the whole world. It takes an enormous amount of uh, dedication, self-discipline. It takes a lot of money uh, to go to dance lessons over and over and over. You have to support people, you have to support what you're doing. And uh, what better investment than your children? Four times world champion is Galway girl Claire Greeny. Despite her history proving Claire is a tough contender to beat, she trains every day in order to retain her title as world champion. I was definitely nine or ten before I actually realised that I had a talent to work with. Um, but for a long time it was just something I did every week because I absolutely loved it and adored it. I was blown away by her really, just how natural she was. You're looking at dancers, you know if somebody has, has the feet, they have the courage, the timing. Yeah, we, we knew from the start. It's very rare to see a talent like that, I think. Yeah, it's just, it was so natural and very unusual. She was definitely the motivator behind herself. I would have been content enough with her taking part in it. I had no definite uh, ambitions for her to be, you know, a star in the Irish dancing. And I thought it would be a nice hobby for her, but I certainly at the time never envisaged the uh, heights that she would take it to. I think it was kind of when I was 16 or 17 really that I really started to push myself, thinking, no, I'm not happy. If I'm going to finish dancing, I need to have a world behind me. I just totally went back to basics and said, right, if I'm going to do it, I'm going to do it now. I've won everywhere since, so I kind of just think it clicked in my head and I've never looked back, really. And you have to consider, do you really need four? You don't really need I four. Don't. Only you that needs four. It definitely takes talent to be at the very top, raw talent, combined with hours and hours of work mm -hmm. and determination. And what we mean by work is like real intense work, where it's the attention to detail that makes the difference between, you know, that makes a champion, really. You have to have that ability that on the day, on the biggest stage, that's where you shine. That's where, like, the going gets tough, the tough get going, mm -hmm. basically. You have to have that ability. Because some kids, you know, they're brilliant in class, but they can't transfer it. But Claire has that. She has nerves of steel. A lot of people say I'm a risk taker. Um, I think it's just because I like to do that extra spin 
or an extra hop on the toe or anything like that. Like just, I think it's, Gemma would often say that I'm fearless. Um, if I want to try something, I'll keep trying it until I physically know it's impossible. If I fall, sure, all you can do is hit the floor, you get back up and do it again. It takes huge discipline to get where Claire has got. I mean, she has sacrificed so much. She puts in hours and hours. As she says herself, it's, it's her life, it's everything. She just loves Irish dancing. But it's a passion with her. You know, it's something she really feels and she's willing to put in the hours and hours and hours and really work hard. You get to that stage and you just want it. You don't want to give it up. That's why she works so hard. OK, so three spins. OK, three positions. Three positions. The world title is everything in Irish dancing. Like, it's not even the title, but just the world championships themselves for a lot of people. Um, it's a lot of dancers' dreams just to make it to the worlds and to compete at the worlds no matter what. Um, for other people, the world title is everything. Um, there's no money involved, but it's just the kind of prestige of having that world title and knowing that if you have that title that people consider you the best in the world. Um, that's just, it's enough really when you have that title, no matter what, no money or anything is needed really, just to have that title is amazing. Young dancers have to give up everything, you know, and uh, you're talking about three, four classes a week, afternoons on a Saturday, their social life is really curtailed. Mm -hmm. And while it's a good thing, I think, to have, you know, kids are busy, um, they do have to make a lot of sacrifices and it's the kids that make those sacrifices. They're the ones that usually come to the top, you know, if they have the talent to back it up. You lost a bit of your line, kind of, yeah. you veered a bit. A lot of my friends or whatever in college could be going out every night or just having a bit of fun or going places and for me, I can't do that because um, I might have an assignment due um, and because of dancing, you have less time to do the assignment and... Um, you might have class or anything like that. So you do kind of lose out a little bit, and I kind of feel that sometimes I do lose out in the fun. But, I mean, it's a choice I've taken, and I know that if I want to get where I want to be with Irish dancing, you do have to take these sacrifices, so um, I don't regret it at all. After the break, what's behind the fake tan, mounds of makeup and big wigs? Fake tan has nothing to do with dancing. I think it looks ridiculous.